smartest guys around We're about to break it down Like they won the game a million times Well, actually, they didn't really win the game at all Survivor no way to They know it all. Woo! Yes, that's right. Survivor Know It Alls are back. Happy Passover and Thank Merry you. Story to all that celebrates. Yes. A Steven. great tradition of um, one group of people being passed over while the other group gets put <laughs> at risk. Mergatory and Passover, a classic combination. It all happened uh, here tonight as the great mergatory tradition of the new era continues, rolls on like a giant boulder. And uh, we are here to talk about it all here tonight as Josh went home in what could only be described as a very chaotic vote that nobody seemed to know what was happening except uh, for nine people that uh, voted for Josh. <laughs> I think it was eight, to be fair. Yeah, it was, it was eight. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, such a staple of the new era. Like, j j that I, we can't even tell you how crazy it is. It's so chaotic. It's so crazy. None of it, nobody here knows. Nobody knows. That's, yeah. But I, we'll all vote the same anyway. Just, just you know. <laughs> yeah. We're all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, a lot to break down here uh, with another uh, fun episode, certainly. Uh, maybe uh, we'll try to figure out exactly uh, what went wrong for Josh. So many things, probably, uh, as we are here live on Survivor know I will speak with Josh himself coming up on Thursday here on Rob has a podcast. And then I will have a recap of all of uh, everything that's going on with our great friend Karishma is going to be on the podcast with me coming up on Thursday. Stephen, I missed you last week. I know you were hobnobbing with the glitterati in, in, uh, in uh, North Carolina. So you true. Know. But um, I had an amazing conversation with James the Jones. Glitter the glitterati. Uh, <laughs> the, that's pretty good. Um, I've like never gotten as good feedback. No offense to all of my previous oh, guest I, hosts, but I've it. never gotten as good feedback. Oh, from I think you meant uh, even the episodes with me, probably. <laughs> well, for sure, those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. People love James. I love James. I mean, he was saying things. You know, we've been talking about this for a long time. He was saying things I'd never, I'd never heard said before. I was really was really uh, uh, taken. No, he did a great job talking about uh, everything that happened last week. Really enjoyed uh, getting to listen to the two of you on the Know It All last week. So thank you again to James, uh, who uh, filled in for me last week. But let's start to uh, dig in a little bit to what's coming up here uh, with this uh, mergatory vote. Stephen, uh, at any point, was this a surprise to you? No, it really felt, I mean, it felt so telegraphed that maybe that was the surprise, right? I mean, that's yeah. typically the the survivor way is that we have a very clear vote and then something, you know, some something goes haywire and someone gets a, a change of plans and everything flips on its head. So truly the surprise was, was, was no surprise that yeah. the thing people were saying at the very start of the episode and in the middle of the episode was the thing that happened at the end of the episode. Yeah, this was a bit of Survivor final destination for Josh, who really, for all intents and purposes, was ready to go home last week. Right. And then ultimately, we delayed his trip to Ponderosa by two days. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and so that was was that the takeaway from the brain trust in Raleigh that Josh was the one who would have gone home. Did you think that there was any shadow of the doubt? No, I just wanted to be sure that we're all, you know, on the same. And that seems to be what everyone has, has been saying. And, and you know, certainly yeah. this week, you know, Jam Jam, who was positioned last week as the swing vote. And, you know, will he go with Josh or will he go with Carolyn? There didn't seem to be any question of uh, who he wanted to vote out this week. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um Josh was such an interesting player to have on the season. Uh, I feel like that I would love to just talk about Josh for a moment because he attempted to do so much. I mean, he struck me as somebody who um, 
was a fan of Survivor, but maybe not to the 3D printing level of fandom of of the show. Where and I, you're not even competitive if you're not at that level anymore. <laughs> right. So I, I feel like that he was, you know, uh, you know, certainly like uh, I do not want to gatekeep the fandom, but I just felt like that Josh was somebody who didn't really know the game as well as some of the other players in this season. But I do appreciate that he w- took a lot of swings. Well, what was so interesting was the antipathy towards him, which we never really saw a cause for. I mean, we certainly saw the origins of the very fun, you know, kind of rivalry friendship that he had with Jam Jam. And we saw, you know, him creating a connection with Carolyn. But the more surprising thing to me was how much people on the Soka tribe were out to get Josh. And I'd love to talk about that maybe even in-, in Then why didn't you all keep Claire? Right. Well, I mean, well, that, I mean, you know, there were people who did want to keep Claire, to be fair. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, like like the like Franny and Matt, who were targeting Josh tonight, they mm-hmm. they did try to keep Claire. But- um, Well, Matt, uh, you need a vote for that. Yeah, well, exactly. Exactly. That was, that was the problem. But- um, and, and you know, Danny and Brandon, where were they for Josh tonight? You know, that he was like the third in their yeah, what happened to the meat brigade. <laughs> yeah, that was just out the window, just the highs of uh the highs of you know reward chocolate or whatever they were eating last last week was mm-hmm. uh, yeah, know, I whatever. believe it was tuna wraps. But, tuna wraps. Uh, well, some <laughs> whatever was giving them that caloric rush was uh mm-hmm. you know, yeah. It's, uh, so I, I think that from what we see in this episode where Josh gets to the mergatory beach and because he was trying to run this fake idol scam last week. Now he kind of has to keep it going. He kind of got painted into a corner by telling jam jam last week. Well, you know, I've got another idol, which then Carolyn like relayed to, uh, the, the guys at the, uh, the sanctuary to which Brandon then comes to Josh and says like, Hey, like a word on the street is you got an idol and he has a choice here. And he says, yes, yes, I do. But he also tells Jamie, right? No. So that was what was particularly like, didn't he tell Jamie that he did not have the idol? He did not have that. uh, He used the idol that they all got, but I think he was also trying to say that he had a second idol from the birdcage. I thought he was saying he did not. Maybe I, maybe I misread, maybe I miswatched that, that, that part of it, that he like said, he did not have the birdcage idol to one person. And he did have the birdcage idol to another person. Maybe, maybe I missed that, but like um, either way, it seemed like he really didn't own, you know, if you're going to make the pitch, I've got a fake mm-hmm. idol. I think, you know, you got to go for it. You got to like play it up. You got to. And, and I think he, you know, the sort of question of like, does he even have one became, I think part of his downfall because yeah. people weren't scared of it. They were just cautious about it. They, they were, well, maybe if it is a real idol, we'll, we'll throw a few votes here and there. Right. But he didn't play it. He just kind of gestured vaguely in, in the direction of a fake idol. But it also seemed like a fundamental misread of the situation in that had Josh come in saying, no, I have nothing. I have yeah. nothing. Uh, he becomes in- less threatening. Who's right. worried about Josh? Why is he a priority for for anybody? But the fact that, you know, he was talking about, how oh, I have this advantage. It made there be like a lot of conversation about how we should go for Josh. I- I think it was more than that, though. And this is the flummoxing thing. You know, the first names we see thrown out are Franny and Matt. And Franny is the first one we see. She's like, I, I'm worried that Josh is here. I don't trust him. We got to go for Josh. And, he, and she throws out Josh's name. It's the first right at the very start of, of Murgatory, right when they get together. She she pitches Josh to Heidi and Jamie. And then a few moments later, Matt pitches Josh to, to Jam Jam. And it's like. I mean, to me, like this is the untold story of this moment, which is that, you know, Soka, which has been this hugely dominant tribe, immediately turning on one of their own rather than getting back together and potentially running running the merge. I mean, isn't this the story of Survivor? I mean, it wasn't that the story of Timbira? Um, yeah, well, no, one hundred percent. I think that's what's like what's so interesting about this is that we really are not seeing these kind of tribal lines being drawn in the way that they used to be, right? Nobody. Mm-hmm. I mean, we the only real we saw, you know, Jam Jam, Carolyn, and Carson kind of getting back together as sort of that that 
what are the three stooges three stooges, three stooges. That's, yeah, not yeah, yeah. that's not bad that's not bad yeah <laughs> um, it hasn't been taken before well i guess because that normally uh survivor players don't want to call themselves stooges no i think that's yeah it's does a carson know what the three stooges are i think i mean yeah he's a, you know i think you know people he have does. heard i mean maybe he's never seen them maybe he's never seen the actual you know name one like, stooge blah, 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 carson blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah everyone knows you know curly Curly, Mo. I would say Mo. Mo. Everyone knows Mo. Mo is is Mo the most. I feel like, you know, Mo. Mo. Yeah. Mo value player. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But it's interesting to me that, like, basically, you know, the groups we're seeing are Jam Jam, Carolyn. I think we've Josh. had zero Mo's, Larrys, or Curlys on Survivor. <laughs> no Mo's. No Larrys. There must be a Larry on Survivor. I don't think so. Lawrence. I don't think so. Huh. Well. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> zero stooges no shemp no no shemp um so anyway then we're seeing matt and franny as a group and that's really all we're, we saw today in terms of like you know we saw like you know we were not really seeing these these tribal groupings kind of working together and i'm, I'm curious about that mm -hmm. what's your take on that rob is that just not part of the edit or are are these you know, new era players not well, even thinking in time in terms of tribal lines. You know, we also had the uh divisions uh that happened where Matt and Franny were on one side of the uh mergatory, and then you also had uh where Heidi and Danny were on the other side of the mergatory, I believe. And so Matt and Franny may right. have been like really hyping up Josh, but the people who were a little bit more Josh sympathetic like a Danny right. uh, seem to be more in favor of going for jam jam. Right. That's interesting. Um, that's very interesting because that, well, why do you think that is? Because we saw that conversation with jam jam and Danny in the water and, uh, and jam jam was like, Hey, what about Josh? And right. Danny's and like, like oh, you know what? Whatever. Honestly, yeah. like Danny was like, uh, let, I gotta, we gotta see what they say when they come yeah. back. Like uh, personally, like I, I wouldn't like waste, your time talking to me. We, we got to talk to like, which is not Jam Jam correctly read this. Okay. That, that that did not go great. Yeah. But I mean, is Jam Jam wrong to have thrown out her name? I do feel like sometimes in that situation, you could fault someone for not throwing mm -hmm. out her name fast enough. Like suddenly yeah. all the attention coalesces around someone. You know, you so want to be the person I, driving that. So I, I've studied the mergatory situations uh, over the, you know, the, the seasons that we've done it. And, and yeah. ideally, the, the person that you want to be throwing out a name is somebody that is, you know, the, the people who are not vulnerable are the people who should be throwing out the names. Right. And as we saw last season with Ellie, that if you are up on, on the chopping block, you are one of the six people. I think you probably should not be throwing out the names. You should be trying to get your allies who right. are the people who are not vulnerable to be the people who are throwing out the names. Interesting. It worked out for Jam Jam here. Um, but also that I do think that there was uh, some, you know, fortunate circumstances going his way where there were other interested parties like Matt and Franny working with, you know, uh, the Carolyn's and Carson's. Uh, who were all like on the same page of uh, wanting to get rid of Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was ultimately, I mean, and that's a really interesting point that the people who were most pushing for Josh were also the people who other than Jam Jam were the people who sort of were in, were in power. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, one of the things I thought that was interesting was Carolyn became very frustrated uh, at the merge feast or at the uh, mergatory feast. She said, look, guys, Josh doesn't have an idol. Doesn't he doesn't have an idol? And then everybody just went back to assuming. But what if he does? Uh, yeah. that, that he has an idol. That do you think Carolyn can plead her case to the uh, harder to get people to believe what she's saying, or is that a dangerous road for her? Because at some point it looks like then she's covering for Josh. Well, that's what I was thinking too. It's you know, I mean, obviously that was very funny and very frustrating, which is like this continual role that Carolyn is being sort of put into where she actually like is a very smart survivor player. You know, she has a lot of insight and perspective and people just continually dismissing her. Okay. More frustrating than funny. I mean, the funny part is her reactions to it and her like huge over the top, like, you know, curses and eye rolls. And, sure. Um, but the, I mean, if I were there and someone were saying, Josh 
has an idol. And then the one person denying it is someone who was just on a beach with Josh, who I have every reason to think could be in an alliance with him, who the only story, right, that they've heard from that beach is about how Josh survived the tribal council and Jam Jam was on the other side of it. And, and maybe mm -hmm. they know that Carolyn was on his side of it too. Um, they, you have every reason to consider the, like, you know, you don't want to trust the one person who's sitting at that table who very well could be in an alliance with Josh. But what's so interesting is that Josh's story is that he found the birdcage idol on Soka, which Matt would be able to verify is not true because in his mind, he's the person that found the idol <laughs> in the birdcage idol at Soka. Um. Yeah, I mean, although right? maybe Matt knows, maybe doesn't Matt potentially know that he has a fake idol now, so he doesn't that necessarily is, know who... that, That's potential the, yeah. that maybe does, canon, ha, is but... Matt on to that, maybe that the idol that he has is Bupkis, and so maybe, okay, maybe the person who has the real idol actually is Josh, and so maybe it would lend some credence to the idea that Josh is telling the truth. Right. And that was sort of what he was saying of like, oh, maybe didn't he kind of have a thing of like, oh, maybe he took he the fake the idol, fake. but like thought it was the real one. Or... Steven, the show leaned on Matt so much as narrator of Truly. this episode. And yeah. I mean, it's interesting that he is such a like present narrator in the show because he also kind of gets the like edit of, of like he doesn't know what's going on, but they really do lean on him. He's such an interesting confessional uh you know in a season of great confessional players that his cadence is just so uh like uh interesting to listen to in terms of like where he puts the spacing in his quotes and uh, i i wish that i could recreate it but it's just like uh very fun to listen to yeah it is fun that's a really interesting point like you know you're a student of cadence rob tell me like what is it that like, i'm obviously saying you can't recreate it but like what is it about it like not yet I, yeah not yet <laughs> we're in a lab we've got the team working on the matt cadence uh very excited for that yeah i really enjoy his confessionals but i never thought of it as being a question of his cadence because it's like the things he's saying are not always the best things you know you know to your point you like we were playing survivor and now we're playing capital S survivor. Like that's not a particularly great confession. Survivor but... is always with a capital S. Yeah. No, yeah. if anybody wrote survivor with a lowercase <laughs> S, that person yeah. is a psychopath. Yeah. I mean, go that's, to jail. That's, yeah, You're arrested. But maybe that's the version of survivor where like nobody is casting any votes and all <laughs> votes are invalidated and people are getting like 80% of the people who have been sent home did it with no votes against them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe that's survivor, lowercase survivor. Since when? Since yeah. When? yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like Matt. And I actually am not out. I'm not, I'm not talking about winner's edits, but I'm not out on Matt as a winner okay. because of his social media edit. Matt, as a Twitter account, he's only tweeted once. The mandated, like, I'm plunging into this adventure. I always find the people who don't tweet, other than Tony Vlachos, to be very potential. This is a social media edit. Mm -hmm. Potential yeah. winners, because the people who tweet the most... They're often not the ones. Now, this okay. is not 100% the rule anymore, but they used to uh, sometimes. All right. Abby in the chat tells us even proper nouns should have a, a capital letter, and that's on grammar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So gra grammar watch, spelling watch. Uh, we covered all here on Survivor Know-It-Alls. You loved Matt's analogy at Tribal Council. I did like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me. Should we talk about it? Sure. I thought it was a. It was. It was wild. Uh, I'm surprised to hear you say that you thought it was one of the best ones ever. Well, I. You know what? I. I. The thing that makes something a good. Are you analogy, a skier? Not, not for years, but mm -hmm. I. You know, I used. I used to dabble on the slopes. Look at you. Um, I. Um, the thing that makes something a good analogy is if it gives you a new insight or a new perspective into the thing that's being described. Right. And like 100, 99.9% .9 of these analogies do not do that. I'm in the driver's seat and six people are coming in the doors and they're all telling me different directions, like no, in, no information, but so, okay. So here, here's Matt's like, we were on the bunny slopes. Suddenly it's double black diamond and we're flying down and then a confetti okay. cannon goes poof. And there's a picture that you have to put together with all the little pieces as you're going down the hill. And then you have to vote based on this picture. And here's what I like about that, Rob. I want to defend this analogy because I did get some pushback when I said it was, it was one of the best analogies we've heard in, in recent history. It, I thought this captured the velocity and the chaos of those early merge slash mergatory days better than 
a lot of the things that I've heard in, in, in recent seasons, you know, the, the speed of like going down that hill, just like weaving around the, these double black diamond moguls. And then like, boom, like the chaos. Oh, I just heard a name. Now I've got to run off over here. And like, you're getting snippets from this person and snippets from that person and snippets from this person. I just like, to me, the, the skiing boom confetti cannon and like trying to like pull together the little, you know, flying uh, confettis into some kind of cohesive picture. Like I thought like, yes, like that captures this, the velocity in the chaos of that moment in survivor uh, mm -hmm. in a way that I don't feel like a lot of people have. Yeah. You've talked about this in terms of like when you went back uh, the merge vote in second chances of just, you know, having so many people yeah. on the beach and how, uh, how wild it was. And especially like the time frame uh, here where, you know, you're separated. It seemed like that they had like, uh, again, and maybe um, I, I am not getting the timing right. The way that they did this, it seemed like they, I think they changed up like the schedule for Mergatory this time. It was like they had them get together. They had them live together for a day. And then the second day of the voting cycle was then after a day with no buffs, right. then go to the challenge in the morning go and then have the group be separated, have the merge feast. And then everybody comes back and maybe you have like an hour on the beach for what? a vote. Really? That was it. That's what I, that was, again, I don't know the timing of how yeah. quick they go, but you know, it gets, you, you know, it gets dark. The sun goes down or like, uh, you know, um, early ish. I feel like that they probably get ready for a tribal council, like around five ish again, uh, this is just sort of like uh, a little bit of just supposition on my part, right. but you know, they don't do the challenge at 7 a.m. Um, so they had that one night because you had where Matt and Franny were like holding hands and every everybody like was together on the beach for one day with no tribes. And then I think that all of the mergatory stuff happened in one day. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's why you get a, a vote like Josh, though. Like you don't have time to have strategy in that in that context. Like you're just uh, yeah, Josh. Okay. He's saying Josh. I'm saying Josh. Great. Josh, the end, like we're done. Um, that's, that's, you know, I think that's a really hard, hard, uh, position to be in. Like even, you know, if you have two days or three days to put together a merge vote, mm -hmm. there's, there's just, it's, it's hard because there's so many people with so many different plans. Like <laughs> truly, like, how do you put together a strategy in that, in that kind of time frame? Um, I don't know. I guess you, I guess you, you don't really. Because, Poof, uh, confetti saw, cannon. Yeah, boom. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw three people vote for Jam Jam tonight. Uh, it was Josh who got voted out. Uh, yeah. it was Kane who yeah. was desperately trying to put the votes, uh, not on him. Uh, and then we also saw, I'm sorry, the, the, there were three votes for Jam yeah. Jam. Uh, three yeah, votes you for said Jam that. Jam. You said that. Okay. Said, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it was Josh uh kane and brandon yeah of the three i feel like that brandon is the person that now i think is in the most trouble going into the next vote um that's an interesting call i mean brandon was the person who i think wasn't brandon the one who threw kane's name out in the first place or or was it somebody else who threw his no, name well out it was um well, yeah, he did because he said that uh, that uh, at the Maddie vote, Kane yeah. voted for him, and he doesn't well, trust. No, him. right? Which is, you know, of course, it was such a such a horrible circumstance because again, like mm -hmm. Kane didn't want to vote for Brandon and just felt played like a shot in to, the dark. Yeah, exactly. Just felt like he had to go along with the majority of the tribe, and then it ends up being he's the only person who ends up actually voting for Brandon, mm -hmm. other than Maddie who goes home. Um, and now, of course, that's coming back to haunt him. Yeah. Interesting that Brandon is one of the, you know, actually flips his vote. You know, Kane comes to Brandon, says, like, I don't want it to be me. And Brandon mm -hmm. feels, the, even though Brandon was targeting Kane, um, Brandon feels the pressure and, and does does flip his vote. Is that so what that, you think it was? Or you think that he thought it was actually going to be Jam Jam? Well, maybe he did think, because, like, you know, maybe maybe it was a last minute thing. Kane's on the beach. He's saying jam jam. He's running around saying jam jam. Brandon's like, okay, I guess, I guess jam jam now, you know, yeah. did, did you, you don't think any of them thought jam jam was the main, maybe Josh thought jam jam was the main vote, but it seemed like it, maybe Kane and Brandon were doing sort of I a don't backup know. vote. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think that Josh did. I don't know about Brandon. And then what's interesting is that Brandon and Lauren, who that based off of what Matthew had said in his exit interview, that those two seemed like that they had were working together at part of as part of Ratu. Um, 
Lauren uh, votes with the people over at Soka who uh, voted for Josh. Uh, what did you think about? We saw where Lauren and Heidi seem yeah. to have like an instant connection. Yeah, where they said, you know, just as long as it's not us. Um, yeah, they're like, nobody knows. <laughs> Mike Bloom t- like tweeted, like, how nobody, none, nobody knows who they are, so they have to stick together. And I thought that was a pretty good. Mm-hmm. good these poor. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that was. It was interesting. I mean, that's what's so interesting. You know, Brandon immediately turning on Kane, his his uh, tribe mate from Ratsu, you know, Matt and, and Franny throwing throwing Josh out there. Like, is this good? Stra- I mean, truly, like, why no. is nobody having any kind of tribal loyalty in this? You know, like, yes, Kane voted against you. Yes, you, like, feel mad about that. But you know Kane much better than you know anybody else yeah well i don't want to be too dismissive that it's bad strategy yeah no, but i'm uh, curious like, like why is why is aren't those tribal loyalties like you know i mean it's not just a uh i mean maybe it's three tribes in this shortened this shortened uh yeah time frame so i i guess like if we're going to sort of like look at this like holistically i wonder does and maybe this is like a burning question of like when when you come out of like a three tribes where you have and all the tribes have been to a tribal council because there are factions that that are split inside of that like larger group is it almost impossible to keep that group together whereas if you came out of a group right. of like you know eight we voted cohesive. three people off right. this group of five is five strong we've been sort of like right. uh, battle tested and now our five is now ready to go and unbreakable. Right. And now we have a big alliance as opposed to, you know, these groups of like six, uh, five and four that, that they've been on opposite sides of the votes and they don't have enough numbers to be able to really dominate in a post merge game. Yeah. I mean, not to belabor the thing that everyone has said a hundred times, but to belabor it anyway, um, the shorter season obviously is creating a lot of this, right? You know, you're merged. What, what day is it? Day, I was day 12 at the start of the episode. Okay. I mean, you know, day 12 instead of day. I think it might have been day 13 was 19, the vote. Yeah. you know, which is when they used to merge, you know, and, and not just that, but the frenetic pace of the game where you always have something to do, right? It's that like boredom where the real deep bonds and of course the real deep sort of antipathies are created. It's when you have a day with nothing to do. And you're sharing stories about your, you know, your family at home and you're breaking down and you're, you're like, you're like missing, you know, your loved ones. Whereas versus now it's like, it's, it's every single day they're, they're doing something. So it's, it's just, you just don't have that same like huge expanse of time to create real bonds or really to create real enemies. Steven, last week we saw where the Meat Brigade got together and it was Brandon and Danny. Oh, I can't wait. We got to work together. We got to protect the guys that right. are good at the challenges. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even see one conversation about that tonight. Yeah. I mean, no um, no mention of saving Josh, that's for sure. I no mean, mention of saving Josh? No mention of like... Uh, like yeah. Being together? Yeah. yeah. It's hard, though, because, you know, they're not... They're obviously, like you said, like they're in... Um, they're in different situations, right? Where Brandon is, you know, is immune and, and kind of like in a deciding position and, and Danny kind of maybe has to scramble a little bit more. And, and, and Danny did, yeah. you know, try to, you know, did not respond well to Jam Jams. <laughs> but we didn't even see them with Carol. Like, Carolyn, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that is the scene we all really wanted, but probably did not actually happen. I can't believe it. Oh boy, you got lucky. You would have been voted out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that would have been, you know, interesting just to see, like, where was that going? Because those guys seem pretty gung-ho about it. We didn't even see, like, uh, unless I missed it, did they even, like, uh, have, like, um, a beat together in the episode? Um, No, I don't think so. I don't think mm-hmm. we saw anything. Um, Let's talk about someone who we have not spoken about at all, even though she is the, the most marker. important player in the game. Uh, yes. Jamie, very fun, very fun player. She is very fun. Can I give you my prediction for where this Jamie story is going? Yeah. That, you know, Jamie's edit has been, uh, I, I don't want to like do too much edit reading, but uh, that if I just based off of like, uh, you know, the storytelling, okay. The storytelling has been, we constantly see Jamie like, I have a magic wand. Whatever I say goes, bring, bring, yeah, bring. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. the most important person in the game. I'm so important. I'm so important. I get my way all the time. Bring, bring. And, and it's super fun. Right. And I feel like that uh, for Jamie, what I see in my crystal ball is like her being 
like, oh, they think they're going to vote me out tonight. But look at me. I've got my magic wand and I'm going to play my idol tonight. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then right. I feel like it's going to come to a screeching halt. That's very fun. That's a very fun prediction where it's a big, like flamboyant misfire with the idol. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. And like uh, really a like confessionals, like leading up to wait till they see tonight, because I've got like a one more magic trick up my sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very fun. I like that. I like that. that I just I, think I it's think. Uh, that they have just given us the, her story in the season has just been like that. She has, you know, this uh, like I, I don't want to say overconfidence, but incredible confidence and constantly telling us and the other players in the game you know I'm the, the most important piece on the board, right? <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. But she does it in such a way that I'm you sort of charmed by it. You know, we love it's it. like, I, yeah. she's a great she's great. She, uh, I, yeah. I, I I love her as a character. Yeah. Uh she's uh so fun to have on the screen. Yeah, there's so many great characters in this season. Um, fun Carolyn episode. I mean, even in, where Carolyn did not have that much to do in this episode, we're still gonna get fed like a healthy dose of Carolyn. Yeah. Um, and so one player who we also have not talked about who actually is probably one of the most important players in the game is, is Carson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, Carson, I thought had a great night. Obviously there's the challenge, which we'll get to, I'm sure in a second, but, um, you know, Carson as being in this amazing spot of, you know, trying to bring jam jam and Carolyn back together as the street, the three, the three stooges, I guess we did talk about Carson vis-a-vis -vis the three stooges, then also sort of having these alliances with raw too. And, you know, potentially having a lot more going on. Yeah, Carson really does seem like he is uh, the best position, one of the best position players in the game, has a lot of different connections. Yeah. Did you feel like uh, that, of course, like once you saw the famous survivor tree puzzle, yeah. you knew that Carson was going to ace this one. Did he go too fast, Steven? Did he make it look you're, too easy? When you're trying to make the merge, I think you don't, you know, you're not like hesitating. You're not like, let me, let me like screw up a few times by accident. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Like here, Matt, why don't you, you put, put this one right, right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, I mean, like, and plus like, this has got, I mean, like good on him for not bragging. Right. Like good on him for not he like, didn't have to. Sh shouting out. Yeah. Jeff was bragging for him. That's, that's yeah. true. That's true. Now, Let's talk about the thing that people are talking about here, which is I've seen a lot of reaction of people who are very upset that a Carson can, you know, machine or 3D print these puzzles at home. Yeah. And then come in and ace, ace the, yeah. these challenges. You know what? That these puzzles are available like on like i know that I, i've seen it that you know oh people that have the resources to do it but i mean i think that you know if if you are somebody who is in the casting process for survivor right like these things are 24.95 on etsy that i think that if you are going into a game for a million dollars. Okay. Yeah. I think that you could, that I think it is a good investment for a person to be able to do it. I don't think that the average person should be spending their time 3d printing puzzles, but at the point where you're talking to Jeff Probst and you have tickets booked to Fiji, like, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world to be, you know, purchasing these things. And I don't think that, uh, again, like to 3D print your own might be a little bit of a barrier to entry, but these things are pretty widely available. I agree with you about that. But what about from the game perspective of when the game has reached the point where basically the players are all doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, is it incumbent on the game to s mix it up with more puzzles so that the they, players can't They do don't this. want to, Stephen. That they feel like that this is for better or for worse. This is yeah. like uh, showing you that hey, it just goes to show you that you know being a Survivor super fan pays off in terms of you know knowing knowing what we're gonna run. So they like they like it that it's well, sort of. Oh, if you ahead. listen on the Jeff Probst podcast, he's talked he's talked about how that they love when people practice the puzzles uh, at home but what do you think do you like it like because like the puzzle was always the point so in the challenge right when anybody could win this was the point that you know where, where any you know huge 
um, you know, huge lag could be made up. And and now it is not an equalizer right. because now it is whoever has practiced the most will be able to do it. Now, of course, there's I, always people who are good at puzzles. But. Yeah, I think that the novelty will wear off when, yeah. you know, you have in Survivor 47 where, you know, 17 of the 20 people in the show have memorized the puzzles and then you come in and then it's like every puzzle is like super boring because people are just doing it from memory. Right. And... I think at that point they will probably get frustrated and have to go back to the drawing board. So, you know, for now it's an advantage for the people that, that do it. But I do think that eventually, even though survivor thinks it's novel, I think that they will too tire of this. Yeah. I, so I, I have been enjoying it and I agree with you. It's still like kind of fun. Like we've only seen a, a few people actually do it. I was talking to Dalton before we went on and he made the, and, and I think his, his column today is all about sort of, the puzzles and you know this this issue of you know replayability and perfectability and game ability and he kind of made the point of you know something else jeff has said in his podcast a lot is that they are making the game so chaotic because they don't want players to be ahead of the game right yes. like that's why oh. there's always crazy advantages and a total unpredictability yeah. and this is an area where players have absolutely beaten the game right they have absolutely outthought and gotten ahead of the game and to me like this is where you know you know if you're gonna have if you're gonna like try to outfox the players with like strategy like maybe also try to outfox them in like the physical component where like they actually should be you know kind of a little bit on their back foot like from my perspective i would like the players to be able to think through the strategy of the game and maybe not already know the puzzles of the game Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to see them just like tweak it just enough to really mess with them of yeah. it. you come in and you think it's going to be uh, the, the thing that you memorized, but it's slightly off and it's just completely like you have a player just have like a meltdown because yeah. the puzzle isn't exactly uh, what you thought it was going to be. Can, can I talk about something else from the uh, challenge tonight? I think we should retire the giant Indiana Jones ball. Because of the injuries? I think somebody's going to get really hurt one day. Yeah. You know, like when they are like, if you, it's one thing to like, okay, dig it out. It's one thing to push it. But when they're like, okay, now push it over the obstacle. And like, you have players like getting underneath it. Like that thing could really, you, somebody could get seriously hurt. I, I don't want to be like such a, a dad on, on the podcast, but the, I'm surprised that, uh, you know, like, I'll I'll be surprised if somebody doesn't get hurt, really hurt with the giant ball. Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit of that opinion. You know, I was trying to think. You know, when people are blindfolded, I hate that. like blindfolded carrying heavy objects. Right. I hate that because you're bas like it happens all the time. People are hitting their heads. You know, this one I'm I'm sort of on the fence with because I agree. Like obviously, Carolyn got hurt, but you know, if there's a giant ball, or like. Like all over the obstacle course, like right. you know, just and, just turn every once in a while to get a, a sense of where it is. Challenge in Survivor Africa. Okay, push the giant ball, but yeah. I, like I think that th this one where we're like like okay, now everyone get underneath the ball and then uh, like lift it, and we'll also you're on no calories. It's just a, it seems like a recipe for somebody really getting smushed. Yeah, well, I mean, it's certainly we saw it tonight, right? So so. uh yeah, I mean, but of the of the dangerous things Survivor does, I, I don't feel like can't the 3D print a giant ball though, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Well, I mean, you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would require a lot of privilege to yeah. 3D print a giant ball. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah, practice um, that. Does Matthew have that in his backyard? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Boston Rob does though. Boston, because mm -hmm. like Boston Rob also like he like Joe. He has survived like Joe Anglum. Like he makes survivor challenges in his backyard, right? But he they're like endurance challenges, so people don't get upset about it. Like he would is make, that what like, he's doing? He would all do like yeah. He he would do like some of like the the holding challenges. Like he he, mm -hmm. he would do that. Yeah. Um. I mean, Rob has like Boston Rob has like challenges in his backyard. You know, not like that level, but um. Yeah, people people have been practicing these for for years. Mm -hmm. it's just yeah. like it's just gotten so extreme with like the exact same puzzle knowing where every single piece goes what was the turning point was this when colin stone told spencer bledsoe no. what puzzle was that the first no, no? nobody nobody knew unless you were like super like in the weeds like podcaster like uh you would not have known that i i feel like that um probably 
Evie in season 41. That was the first time that it got called out by the show of this is something that people should do. I'm trying to think if there was another way. Like David Wright had like all uh, like a book of like every single puzzle and he brought that with him to go and uh, do the Edge of Extinction. So I, I don't know, maybe uh, that it did not become completely mainstreamed, I think, until Survivor 41. I'm just kidding, like, what was the actual first, do we, I mean, what was the first time that someone knew a puzzle was going to be there and then, like, I mean, I guess whatever, that, that becomes, like... I think Spencer, that was probably the first time that somebody, like, had the foresight to study a puzzle of yeah. bef- that had uh, that had been on the show previously. So Colin Stone should be on Survivor Game Changers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. Steven... Should we take some questions from the audience yeah. of Robert's podcast? Yeah. Okay. All right. If you got questions also, uh, we can still bring them into the show. Okay. All right. Um, oh, one, one last thing before we do. Yeah. Carolyn votes for, um, she votes for Kane. That's obviously just like a backup vote, right? In case Josh plays an idol. Yeah. Well, that's here's That's the first question. Uh, was Carolyn left completely <laughs> out of the vote? Was she originally one of the designated Kane backup votes? It makes no sense. Uh, no one told her about uh, her ally uh, Yam Yam as uh, or Jam Jam as the eleventh hour choice. Yeah, I think she was going for Kane as a backup vote in case Josh played his idol. Maybe knowing that Josh might target Jam Jam. Mm-hmm. Maybe knowing that Josh was targeting Jam Jam. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like that the Survivor editors tonight were making us. For hoping we forgot that Josh didn't have a real idol because, <laughs> like, after the vote, it's like, does anyone play an advantage? And then we yeah. got shots of Josh, like, uh, should I play it? Should I yeah. not? Like, it's, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not real. Yeah. What, are you, what are you trying to trick us for? <laughs> we didn't forget. Yeah. Maybe somebody, maybe people were like, oh boy, New Era, it's so confusing. Does he yeah. have a real idol? I don't even know. Yeah. But I, I have to think that Carolyn has been so tapped in all season long. I, it would be wild to think that she was left out of the vote enough to the point where um, she was like uh, just like doing something wrong. I, I think it had to have been that maybe is somebody else going to play an idol on Josh? Maybe. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that no, no. I think I think um, she was just a backup, just just in case. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you're right. Like Carolyn of all people knows that Josh doesn't have an idol and is convinced of that. So. Her, but I, I do think maybe she was she was a backup. I mean, I don't think she was left out of the vote. Hey, one more one more tangent here. What did you Please. think of Carson telling Kane, which then immediately got back to Brandon? But Carson, you know, safe tonight and can kind of like be like, oh, oops, mm-hmm. that was so goofy of me, you know, and um, ends up pot- potentially. I mean, not really saving Kane because because uh, you know Josh went home, but you know, keeping Kane out of the way of a potential. Oh. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. And I did like how Carson played it after the fact where he uh, then uh, he told Brandon what he did. And Brandon was like, Carson, that was a bad idea. He's like, I know. Oh, yeah. I shouldn't have yeah. done that. Uh. <laughs> so that was the, I truly, that was like great. Like that was like, oh, like, oh, whoops. I'm such a goof. You know, that is a great way to play it. Like just mm-hmm. like fully own up to it. I also like that he told them about his idol also uh, before yeah. we got to the bus. So I mean, he did a lot of like little things well, Carson. Yeah. So um, in terms of telling Kane, uh, giving him like, uh, I mean, for, for Carson, the only dangerous thing is that he's also, you know, aligned so tightly with Jam Jam. Jam, Jam. Like, yeah. are you w- like, do you potentially like destabilize the vote like at the peril of Jam Jam? If it's right. if it's going on to, you know, Josh uh, and potentially, you know, Kane's name is being floated out there. Right. I mean, the fear is that then Kane runs around and does something chaotic. But you never like if someone is going to run around and do something chaotic, like is, is Kane going to be the guy yeah. who to like f- totally flip the vote onto Jam Jam, given that? I don't think so. I don't think Kane's long for this world. I don't think Kane's got a lot going on. Well, you know, we haven't really talked about that. Uh, the all of the uh, Jam Jam and Josh stuff tonight. But, yeah. you know, what a fascinating relationship it's been over these last three episodes with Jam Jam and Josh to the point where. You know, we had lo- like a, you know, uh, like Godfather 2 moment uh, with uh, Josh trying to like uh, basically like, uh, you know, uh, like uh, 
Michael Corleone uh, kissing Fredo of, you know, oh, I, you know, I've got you. Uh, and Jam Jam, like, uh, wanting to say, I wish you would have said, uh, bye, baby. <laughs> he didn't say that. Yeah. Josh did look deep into Jam Jam's eyes and says, I'm not voting for you. And and Josh does, does vote for Jam Jam. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So that was, uh, you know, just a a fun wild ride between those two interested to talk to Josh tomorrow and see, uh, you know, how he ultimately feels about jam jam. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see, Steven. Um, okay. How about Ryan Irwin, who I had the pleasure of meeting last week in Raleigh. Okay. As a question. All right. Ryan Irwin wants to know who goes first, Matt or Franny, or do they both make final three? Okay. Who you got? I mean, I've always said that Franny seemed to be the one who was a little bit more game focused and Matt yeah. was a little bit more. I mean, just and Matt was a little bit more Franny focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my money would still be on Franny. Yeah, I think so. OK, all right. Um, how about um... But again, like Matt is my potential social media edit winner pick. So I'm not out on Matt's chances <laughs> just because he hasn't been tweeting. You like that. I mean, in this, in this day and age, you know, like the guy, like his whole storyline is basically a showman's and he's a huge narrator. Who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows? You know, it's more than thing, Gabler had. One thing that the new era has shown us is that we know nothing in terms of edit reading. Yep. Okay. All right. How about from Tubby Lunchbox? Are the five remaining that lost the challenge more likely to be targets moving forward because they had the opportunity for their names to come up? So... Yes. Go, I mean, we could take a look back at some of the previous uh, seasons and see if uh, that was the case. Uh, so if I can recall in season 43, uh, the other people who were eligible for the vote were Cassidy, James, um, I believe was, uh, was it Owen and Sammy? Oh, well, those uh, are all like, you know, <laughs> end gamers basically. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess not. But um, I would think in general that's the case. But I mean, I guess if if actual history says otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm amazed that I you don't can think remember so. that, Rob. No, I, I don't know that I'm right. I think that there's got to be one other person uh, as well. So uh, I remember who was that. It was uh, Gabler, Carla, Janine. Oh, right. With uh, the, the Jesse great feast were at the when Gabler were, throws out. Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they, were, they were all yeah. the feasts. I think uh, Noel was there. At least name. Um, so. That was oh, a great oh, moment. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, I don't think that being a part of uh, the people that can be voted for necessarily means that you're going to be one of the next people to go. It used to be the case. I mean, again, like such a weird, unique thing that has arisen with this mergatory. But like, you know, the more your name came out, like the more your name would would be out. But maybe now if you like pass this hurdle, you're kind of giving a clean slate. Mm -hmm. And then maybe yeah. like rebounds onto the other group because they weren't. I mean, it'd be yeah. interesting to talk to like a new school player about that. Like if if there's maybe maybe the opposite is true, where now the people who were immune, there's more kind of focus on them. Uh, you know, at the next vote. Mm -hmm. um, put up the James signal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. See, what about this question from Mark? All right. Mark Jackson wants to know, question. They completely ignored Karen in regards to Josh's idol. Will this be beneficial to her? They don't view her as a threat so she can maneuver. What do you think? Is this a good sign that people are not paying attention to Carolyn? <laughs> um, I don't think in general. I think if you want to win the game, like people have to believe that you're, you know, I think I do think that could hurt Carolyn if she makes it to the end is the perception of her, you know, as not being as smart as she is. No, I, I disagree. I, I think really? that Carolyn that even if people are disregarding her now, I think that Carolyn is exactly the type of person who will stand up in front of the jury and say, and you thought I didn't know what was going on. And I did know this and I did not like, and I think that she'll make like a really impassioned case. And I think that she that while they may like at first blush, like not be paying attention to her, like I think that she'll be able to make an argument about that. Like she did know what was going on because I think that she has been even though I think that people discount her. I think that she has been very savvy over the first 13 days of the game. I mean, that would be a very fun win if Carolyn, you know, did sort of all of these people who have been dismissing her 
every episode just completely rub it in their faces and then actually get their votes. I mean, I, I just would think it would be challenging to get their votes because if people have made up their minds about who you are, you know, it doesn't matter what you say. Like, oh, I did this and I outfoxed you. I mean, you, you'd you really have to lay out a very convincing case. But that's to- not necessarily that she's saying that I, that I you know, um, outfoxed you. But it, like, it's like if that she can like make the case of you all thought I was this and I use that to my advantage that you right. thought I was this way. Like, I think that's the same thing that all of the winners in the new era have been able to right. do. Yes. Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, that is you know, that is true. That is very the what the common denominator with the winners in the new era have been the ability to sort of like read what the jury's perceptions are of the final three, and then right. in a way like parrot it back to them in a way right. that makes it seem like that there was agency in terms of having of like how they were perceived. Right. Right. You know, in in all in, you know, the Erica, Marianne and Gabler win. That's the, like the one thing that all of them are having in common. That's an, an interesting. That's an interesting like that, like that. It's all players who write that that's that, that were that the biggest move of all was like their move about their own kind of perception in the game. The, you saw me this way and I right. played I, I played that up. Right. You know, not necessarily like here's my resume. I got out this person, this person, this person, this person. It was like I I played this way because I knew you thought of me this way and that I, you know, I, like a maneuver in the lane that I had. And how much of that do you think people people's opinions were actually changed as opposed to just voting for who they were going to planning on voting anyway? Th- that you have to put the polygraph test uh, to the jury. Uh, yeah. But, you know, like, I feel like because that I mean, that ultimately, right, like if, if they're just coming in and voting for who they want to anyway, and then like, but yet the people are also making some impassioned plea about how they own their game, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess yeah. that's my point with Carolyn is like, you know, are, are they ever going to want Carolyn to win, you know, because I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just, I, I, I want Carolyn to win, but I, I do think that there might be a, a perception of her yeah. that all these people have where they're not going to be able to like allow themselves to be outfoxed by her. We'll see. Um, yeah. Based on the little bit that we've seen, like I think to uh, know Carolyn is to love Carolyn. Yeah. And, I think and underestimating Carolyn, you know, underestimate her at your peril too. So, so uh, you know, I'd be very happy with that win. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do a couple of more uh, questions. Um, how about um uh little h has a question all right little h wants to know question what under the radar pair is the most dangerous franny and matt or heidi and lauren i mean are franny and matt even an under the radar pair i feel like they're on the radar they're pretty on the radar yeah so i don't know um heidi and lauren is pretty under the radar (laughs) like there is no pair more under the radar than (laughs) heidi and lauren that would be a very fun alliance Mm-hmm. I would be very much in favor of that alliance. Um, Jeff said something very cryptic in the coming attractions for the next episode. Did you catch yeah. that? Like you will not be able to impact the vote or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what'd you think about that? Yeah. Some twist, some twist. I don't yeah. know. I feel like that. I, I just am holding out hope that that's like, they took like half of a sentence of like, that's something he said to like, one person or like the losers of this will not have a say in what happens in the vote tonight, but to, I don't know why that they would want to try to troll us like that. Yeah. That would be a weird, well, there's gotta be some twist, right? I mean, some, some, gotta like, be some twist. you're going to, you know, you're going to exile Island and you yeah. know, you're, uh, you know, typically in the new era, as we saw last season, Jeff says, well, as you know, savvy players know that at the at this point in the game this is when we get to <laughs> sit out of the challenge and we say since when yeah. um and <laughs> i don't know if like if they're gonna like add to that maybe of like it's gonna be sit out of the challenge and also you will not have an impact in tonight's vote if you try to get rice for the tribe like not just sit out of the challenge will you sit out of the vote yeah that's interesting mm-hmm. so i could see that that would be a very fun you're right because that's that's their thing is like now like the your vote is like the currency now mm-hmm. i could definitely see will you sit will you sit out of the vote mm-hmm. yeah. okay all right steven anything else coming up tonight 
I don't think so. I mean, what did we, what did we, uh, yeah, we seem to pretty much, pretty much talk about everybody. Yeah. All right. Well, we will talk with Josh in the morning and then I will get to speak with Karishma on uh, the recap show. And then on the survivor feedback show this week, uh, Mari fourth is going to join me to take your feedback questions. Of course, uh, Steven, uh, so much going on over in the Rob has a podcast patron community. Uh, early access to live show tickets, big perk of becoming a patron of Rob has a podcast. In addition hmm. to access to uh, great international reality TV shows, premium content and more all at Rob is slash patron. Okay. Uh, then, uh, Steven, of course, all of the rest of our survivor podcast feed, uh, you know, everything that's coming your way every weekend, Rob is a website.com slash survivor feed. Hmm. Yes. All right. Steven, that this man, uh, one of my heroes, uh, Australian survivor, George did, uh, five plus hours with Shannon Gus this past wow. weekend. I listened to every minute of it. I loved it. Uh, really recommend uh, any fan of Australian Survivor check out the great uh, Shannon Gus's interview with George uh, from this weekend in our Survivor Global podcast feed. Over, uh, Steve, I have a brand new podcast uh, or one that uh, a rebranded podcast that I do with Jenny Autumn. We call it Hit or Quit. And every mm -hmm. week we're watching a reality show when you tell us, is it a hit or should we quit? And there's a brand new show on the USA Network, uh, Race to Survive, colon, Alaska. We covered episode number one on the latest episode of Hit or Quit. What happens if they if they don't make it? Do they not survive? The, well, that was very close to happening in the first episode. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, check that out. Uh, and then, Stephen, are you a succession guy? I watched the first two seasons, but I felt like at the third season, it just kept on going in the same what? circles. Like, ah, eh, now Shiv is in now what, top. What now kind of Logan's world are we in? Now, now, you seem like you'd be such a success. I guy. loved it, but I was like, there was no forward momentum in the third season. It was just like the same endless conversation over and over I love again. It. Uh, that's good. Uh, look, uh, that you don't even need anything to happen. The conversation is so great. It's I've a been great talking conversation. About Yes, I've been talking about it. Speaking of great conversations uh, with Josh Wiggler, and we uh, got together this morning to talk about uh, episode two of uh, the final season of Succession. I hear there's Check actual forward yeah. movement now. Like there actually yeah. might be a succession in season four. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Only eight episodes left. So yeah. uh, very, very fun uh, to talk that through. And of course, uh, after we get off tonight, 1030 is going to be our Big Brother Canada veto episode coming up so uh be on the lookout for that 10 30 uh with taryn and all of the big brother canada podcasters all right uh and of course uh love is blind of course everybody is talking about it uh whenever it comes back check out asia welch and mary krakowski uh they're continuing coverage of love is blind up in the perfect match podcast feed and of course make sure you can uh be subscribed to everything that we're doing for free at rob is a website.com slash subscribe that'll give you links to all of our rob's podcast feeds and all of our individual show feeds on apple podcasts and spotify all at rob website.com slash subscribe we appreciate your feedback and star ratings there as well all right steven anything fun coming up for you no mm, i mean that's so sad you know easter this weekend very fun looking forward to my easter egg hunt mm -hmm. these kids <laughs> better watch out I'm yeah sharp-eyed for easter eggs yes okay um uh, that's good practice for finding hidden immunity idols yeah that's right yeah that's as close as you come in real life yeah that's right yeah all right well the great steven fishback back with us again i was Thank here you. you're back with us again the great rob sister nino well, back I mean, with us again. I, but i'm also here every single day uh yeah, and you're only here on wednesday well, to me, it's it's all the time. You know, this is this is all there is. Oh, fishy yeah. award. People want to know. Oh, I think you got to give it to Carson. I think this is a great episode. You know, I don't I mean, Josh, it's like I guess you could say Jam Jam, um, but J it wasn't even clear that Jam Jam was driving the Josh, the Josh vote. I think this was a great episode for Carson. I think, you know, he aced this puzzle based on the effort he put in. You know, we really saw him kind of bringing Jam Jam and Carolyn back together. We saw him saving an ally. Um, with Kane and also, you know, kind of diffusing the potential blowback from Brandon. I thought it was a, a really fantastic episode. And I mean, he seems to be playing a very good game. 
Like of the people who are playing games, Carson is maybe playing one of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. V- very well positioned uh, for yeah. Carson. Looking forward to seeing where we go from here. Can you believe we're six episodes into this season? I can't. It feels like it's still starting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're b- almost uh, halfway there. I know. Uh, That's what's very strange about it. Yep. Okay. I mean, and we're, and we're halfway there in terms of days because uh, we're halfway through the 26 day season. So, mm. uh, Looking forward to an exciting back half of the season. Thank you so much for joining us for another Surviving Know-It-Alls. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.